Hi, I'm Ruben Fleischer. I'm the director of Venom, and this is Notes on a Scene from Venom. So we have Eddie's apartment scene, where Eddie and Venom first cross paths, where for the very first time he gets to see the tendrils come out of his body. So this is both a fight scene and a character moment for Eddie, where we try to play discovery as a part of a fight sequence. So to distinguish it from just a typical beat up guys, Eddie is reacting to everything as if it's happening for the first time for him, because it is happening for the first time. The scene starts with tater tots, which are kind of a, a runner throughout the movie. Venom, for whatever reason, has a real taste for tater tots. Do not open that door. As soon as I got the opportunity to direct the movie Venom, there was only one person I thought of to play both Eddie Brock and Venom, and that was Tom Hardy. Just this, like, dark, menacing character. But he also brings a lot of comedy and fun to the role, where he's reacting things as if they're happening to him, and there's even at times, it's as if he's being puppeteered by Venom, which is what we're about to get into. Eddie's hearing voices that are unfamiliar, and then a knock at the door comes. <laughs> And who should appear but four tough mercs. So that's Roland Treese, who's the head of security for the Life Foundation, and he's telling Eddie to put his hands up, but Venom is having none of it. He says, What are you doing? One of the coolest things about this movie is that Tom Hardy plays both roles. He's not only Eddie Brock, but he's also the voice of Venom. You are making us look bad. No, I am not. At the beginning of each day, Tom Hardy would record the whole scene, both Eddie and Venom's voices, and then we would cut out Eddie's part, and then the sound guys would trigger Venom's voice when the scene called for it. Do not open that door. He's actually got a little earwig, so as he is performing the scene, Venom's actually talking to him in the midst of the scene, and that's his own voice, which is pretty cool to watch. And technically, just as an actor, very, very challenging and sophisticated. I'm, uh, I'm putting my hands up. You are making us look bad. I, no, I am not. Yes, you are. No, this is the battle for control of Eddie's body, where Tom is uh, having to play both parts simultaneously. And it was really fun to watch uh, Tom execute this. But, you know, All of Me is a movie that most people haven't seen. We, we obviously have mutual control over our body. Our body. It's my body. But it was a reference point for this movie where Steve Martin's being puppeteered by Lily Tomlin, and this was actually uh, sort of a nod to All of Me, where his body's doing things that he has no control over. Where's the buck? The mercs are having none of it, and they quickly tase him. Take him down. <laughs> this is the first ever time a part of Venom extrudes from Tom's body. But what's so cool about this, in my mind, is that it's not actually Eddie that's throwing the guy out the window, it's Venom. There's a moment of Tom to stop and look and think, what is this black goo coming out of my hand? But before he has a second to think about it, what do you know? <laughs> Venom sends a guy up into the ceiling and down onto the ground. Eddie's trying to submit to these guys, and Venom's, of course, the alpha, and saying, no, we will not submit. We're going to throw them out of windows and put them into the ceiling. The great thing about the Venom movie is that we had the Venom comics to draw from. And throughout the Venom comics, Venom's goo, as we like to call it, it's the technical term, is always coming out of Eddie. Tom Hardy had to pretend as if there was goo coming out of his hand and imagine this. But in this moment, we have Eddie putting out a tendril. And this poor guy is on a um, wire. He's on two wires, one that's up and one that's down. But that is all done with VFX, where we paint out the wires and of course the tendrils aren't really there, but it's just the choreography between the actors. With wire work and, and stunts, we try not to do it too much because this guy's literally getting thrown into uh, the ceiling and the floor and we don't want to hurt anyone. But we probably do it at least 25 or 30 times just to make sure we get it right. No, we probably did it like to two or three, but with th this stunt team is so capable and so talented, you usually get it in the first or second take. So we got some more tendril action, guys getting clotheslined. But again, this is why I love this scene. I'm so sorry about your friends. Where he's smashing these guys left and right. He's actually apologizing at the same time. Sorry about your friends. And then he puts them through a table. And it's about this give and take between Eddie and Venom. And this is really Eddie and Venom's first time to meet. And so Eddie doesn't really understand what's happening. So he smashes poor trees through the table, takes a weight, this weight. Both these weights actually are CG. They weren't actually there. So Tom would just basically pretend to stick his leg out and then toss it, uh, which results in this guy actually getting smashed into a refrigerator. And then this barbell here is totally CG. These bottles, though, are practical. These are classic candy glass bottles that we get to break and smash. 
Another thing I should note about this sequence, which is super important that I'm very proud of, is the score for this scene. Our composer, Luba Gorenson. This is where we really hear the Venom theme come full uh, throughout this scene. And it's a really aggressive, strong synthesizer, kind of these heavy tones. Unlike a lot of movies where you're scoring the action, we're actually scoring the character moment because this is the real moment that we first see Venom for the first time. It's really playing um, that moment of Eddie and Venom and Venom's emergence and, and Eddie's discovery. We had talked about the goo spreading between his fingers, but the way that he performs it was so cool that we just had to go in with VFX and just make this spaghetti accordion basically happen between his arms as he acted it out. But we were cueing from the actor's performance where he's, he's looking at it as if it's actually there. But of course, that black goo isn't there. That's just the power of Tom Hardy's amazing performance. And then the score really accents the oh my God moment of I have black goo coming out of my hands. What is happening to me? Let me go strangle this guy. Oh. Most of all of Tom's actions in the movie were all self-motivated by Tom Hardy, where he would act as if Venom was controlling him. But in this instance, shit. we actually have a wire. This tendril kind of does a good job of hiding. We just did a hand pull where you put a wire on his shoulder and then some guy off camera just literally yanks him out of frame. And you can see that from the front and back as he's flying over and then kick those tater tots into some Merc's faces. So from this moment forward, now the score kicks in and it really becomes like a proper action scene. And this is the first act of a very long extended chase. So we wanted to make sure that we didn't tire the audience out. They're both looking at this fist that's formed like, oh my God, what is that? Neither of them know what's going on. Not only Tom, but also this guy, Jeremy, who was a stunt actor playing opposite him. But of course, this guy's gonna get socked in the face by the venom fist and then thrown into a wall. We employed wires here, which get painted out, but that's real Tom Hardy right there, who is very strong and strong enough to throw a guy into a wall if he wanted to. But because it's a movie, there's something called breakaways. Right here, you can see that these, this wood is balsa wood. It's not real wood. And so Jeremy got thrown into the wall where the shelf was designed to break. You know, if he just hit the wall, that would be satisfying, but even better, if you can have him hit the wall and smash into a, a shelf and break it and have everything on the shelf fall over too. So it just makes it a little bit more exciting with a bunch of stuff on it, a cup even. The other cool thing about this wall is, is that it's made out of foam. So even though it looks like a real brick wall, this is actually a piece of uh, foam that's been painted to look like brick. So we do everything that we can to protect our actors who work so hard. And for this one, we probably did two takes. I think we only had two shelves so that we had to get it right. Venom whips a tendril at this poor guy. This stunt actor's name is Danny, AKA Black Panther, because he did the bulk of Chadwick Boseman's stunts. And so here, Eddie's got him locked with his tendril. And then there was actually a line here that didn't make it into the movie where as Tom punches him, he goes, ball, sternum, face. <laughs> For this one, I don't think we used a wire. I think Danny's just kind of helping motivate the jump. Venom says, now, let's bite all the heads off and pile them up in the corner. Why would we do that? Pile of bodies, pile of heads. This is a great piece of wire work here, but it's also a tribute to Tom's timing because he had to cue his body as if it was jerking to send the tendril out again. We didn't have any real tendrils. Tom Hardy's not actually possessed by an alien. And this is another wire gag here. And he really came at it with force. We had to in post make this uh, wall stable because otherwise it was just shaking so much because of the impact. He really got got this guy. As this guy comes in here, he's wearing a harness and then there's a hole that's been cut into this door. And then there's a, a wire that's coming through the door. And there's two guys behind the door just yanking them as hard as they can. Then in post, we take out the wire and then replace, you can't really see it in this angle, but the, the piece of the door that we had to cut out in order to put the wire through. He got it pretty hard, this poor guy. So Eddie makes his way out of the apartment. His next door neighbor who oh, shit, man. audiences will never know is named Ziggy. Not sure what's going on. He's freaking out, dude. Tries to go down the stairs. He sees one Mark. Jeremy, that a guy that got tossed into the kitchen wall, comes out firing. There's nowhere to turn, so Venom decides we're going out the window. 
This whole apartment was a stage that we built in Atlanta. Even the staircase, everything is a stage on set. It's a two-story set. So this is Tom Hardy running towards this window, which you can see actually, see the distortions in his face? That's because it's not real glass, that's candy glass, which is made out of candy. And then we cut to the reverse, where we see his stunt double, Jacob Tamuri, who's an incredibly talented New Zealander, jumping out the actual window. So from the front, this is a set wall. This brick here is all just normal plywood, but we call facing the, the outside of the window just so that we could get this shot. We had a crane outside the window so we could get Tom shot running at us. And then the reverse is with the camera inside pushing after Jacob as he jumps out the window. And so as he goes out the window, you can actually see how cheap this balsa wood is because it just breaks right off. Does a good job uh, of protecting his face as he goes through. And this, this reverse here, this apartment here, is a blue screen. So after the fact, we went in and turned the blue screen into a neighboring apartment. That glass that's falling with him is actual real practical candy glass. And that's really Jacob, the stunt double falling. But that I think is Tom Hardy himself because he also did the wire work for this gag for all the close-ups. Everything from this side on is all green screen and replaced with the city and here on over is green screen, but this is all practical against the set so that we could actually get the effect of Eddie falling out of the apartment. And he, of course, is on a wire. He's not free falling there. Cannot afford to lose Tom Hardy. All right, I think that concludes our uh, scene breakdown. I am grateful for the opportunity to tell you a little bit about Venom, and I hope you'll go check it out in the theaters.